Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and today's video for you guys, Week 15 Tight End Rankings for Fantasy Football in 2020. Inside this video, we are going to be discussing my top 20 ranked tight ends for week number 15 of the 2020 Fantasy Football season. Before we get into it, I'd like to ask if that at any point inside of this video, inside of these rankings, you end up enjoying, you end up having a great time, to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. And if you're not new, you've been here for a while, or maybe this is like your second video, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure that you hit that like button down below as well. That would really help me out a ton. And before we get deep into it, I'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com offers a variety of games on their website. It's my favorite way to play daily fantasy sports on the internet. They have the matchup shop, which I typically talk about, where you have one player versus another, plus or minus a certain amount of fantasy points. You pick one, and you put as much money on that matchup as you want, as low as like a dollar, and as high as I believe $500 plus. But this week, I want to talk about the quarterback shootout, because I won a lot of money on this last week, and it is very, very simple. All you have to do is you're going to get a bunch of matchups on your screen, and all you have to do is pick five out of the 10 to 12 that show up on your screen. And if you get them all right, the prize is very, very big. The top 10% win $50. First place gets $500. Now, obviously, I didn't win $500, even going 5 and 0 oh, because three other people won, but that is still a decent amount of money. My other ones went 4 and 1, and the other one went 4 and 1 as well. So I made a combined $300 on Overlay DFS last week. It is very, very simple. You just pick who scores more fantasy points, player versus player. That's how easy it is. You guys do all this research all week long to win your fantasy matchup, so why not win some extra cash on top of it on OverlayDFS.com. And we are back. Let's get into it. Week 15 tight end rankings. We begin with tight ends 1 through 10. Coming in at number 1 this week, we got Travis Kelsey at the New Orleans Saints. Now, quick preface to this, the top 10 looks a little light on the week, basically because on Thursday Night Football, we had two of the better tight ends for fantasy football, player ready in Darren Waller and Hunter Henry, and obviously they're not included in these rankings because that would be dumb because they already played, and it would be stupid to talk about a game that already happened. So at number one, we have Travis Kelsey at the New Orleans Saints. Travis Kelsey is pretty much the number one tight end every single week in fantasy football. This guy is simply built different. He's an upper echelon at the tight end position. Now, last week, the New Orleans Saints defense kind of crumbled a bit, which was very surprising because they've been very stout as of recently. Early on in the season, they weren't looking amazing, but recently, they've looked a lot better. Now, they do have Drew Brees likely starting under center this week. What does that mean for Travis Kelsey? It might mean that this game is a murder at the hands of Kansas City Chiefs because Drew Brees isn't ready to go, or maybe... Maybe it means that Drew Brees is able to fight back into this game, go toe-to-toe with the Kansas City Chiefs, which is one of the best offenses in the NFL, if not the best. So this could be good, could be bad, but either way, it should not really affect Travis Kelsey because the guy just gets so much volume in one of the best pass offenses in the NFL. Number two, we have Wiki Wiki, Marky Mark Andrews versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars' defense blatantly is one of the worst defenses I've ever seen grace the earth uh, in in football. It's just, frankly, it's fucking awful. But Mark Andrews has been very solid this season. He has had his ups, and he's had his downs strictly because Lamar Jackson doesn't play amazing in all these games. In some games, the guy's arm just fucking crumbles like it did, apparently, when he had to go and had cramps in that game. He totally didn't have to just go take a fat dump with that said. Mark Andrews should be very heavily utilized in this game. Why? Because all the other receivers on this team, Hollywood Brown and a couple other guys, have the big Rona, so they're not going to be able to play in this matchup. So that It'll definitely open the doors wide open for Mark Andrews to be very involved in this matchup. At number three, we have TJ Hawken, God at the Tennessee Titans, with or without Matthew Stafford. Definitely does hurt TJ Hawkinson, but it doesn't hurt him enough to where he'd fall outside of like the top five, in my opinion. Whether it's going to be Chase Daniels or whether it is going to be Matty Snapback, I'm not super worried about TJ Hawkinson because of the extreme amount of volume and the plays that are designed for him in this offense up against the Tennessee Titans. At number four, we have Robert Tunyon versus the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Carolina Panthers defense defense was looking very good for, I'd say, the last three weeks, aside from last week. Last week, they just got strictly bent over by Horsecock Drew Locke, but before that, they were looking very, very good, especially for fantasy football, scoring 20-plus points two weeks in a row, but last week, the curse or the greatness was broken by Drew Locke, and Robert Tanya should be able to look very good in this matchup, as I have Aaron Rodgers as the number one quarterback on the week, so I really think that the Green Bay Packers are going to handily beat the shit out of the Carolina Panthers. At number five, we have Gronk Spike Robert Gronkowski at the Atlanta Falcons. Rob Gronkowski, 
here going up against one of the worst defenses in the NFL up against the tight end. There should be no doubt that Gronk should be getting the ball in his hands at least a couple of times this matchup and have the opportunity to score a touchdown, which will elevate him potentially inside of the top three on the week. At number six, we have Dallas Godert at the Arizona Cardinals. Now, this is a matchup that I'm really uh, looking forward to watching on Sunday. Two teams with young quarterbacks that are kind of similar. Uh, and two offenses that look pretty decent versus two defenses that aren't the greatest. So it should be very interesting to see. Jalen Hurts and Dallas Godert obviously aren't on the same page as Carson Wentz and Dallas Godert. So in my opinion, that hurts Godert. But again, he is still going to be involved in the offense because this offense heavily utilizes the tight end position. And Zach Ertz just seems like he's just irrelevant in this offense at this point in the season. So I do really like Godert up against the Arizona Cardinals. And number seven, we have Easy E, Eric Ebron at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the biggest worry with this Pittsburgh offense is they have so many fucking names, and Eric Ebron is one of those big names, but he also is one of those big names who just has butterfingers or something. He lubes up his hands before the game. Instead of putting glue, that Nike's Elmer's on his hand. He's putting on some KY, and he's dropping the ball left and right in the game. Mike Tomlin has literally announced that he has a no-nonsense offense. If your ass is going to be dropping the ball, you might as well sit on the bench and Vance Dance McDonough. McDonald, Vance. McDonald? I haven't talked about that guy in so long, I even forgot what his name was. Vance McDonough is his name. But with that said, Eric Ebron is still going to be the guy there up against Cincinnati. Hopefully he can just hold on to the ball. That's really my only gripe with Eric Ebron. And number eight, we have Jared Cook versus the Kansas City Chiefs. We did talk about this a little earlier. Now, it seems like Drew Brees is going to get the nod to start in this game up against the Kansas City Chiefs, which dramatically rises the stocks straight to the fucking moon of Jared Cook because Taysom Hill, just the other tight end, just wasn't throwing the fucking ball to Jared Cook. Plain and simple, he just wasn't looking that way. He'd rather tuck it and run for the first down rather than Drew Brees will just throw it Jared Cook's way, especially in the red zone. So now this shoots Cook up a whole bunch, and I do like Jared Cook here up against the Chiefs. At number nine, we have Evan Ingram versus the Cleveland Brown. Evan Ingram is the fantasy football's representation of the most random thing ever. Evan Ingram is either going to play really good or really bad. Typically, you don't see an in-between. Like, you'll see Evan Ingram drop the ball like seven times in this game, or we're going to see Evan Ingram catch seven balls and score like a touchdown and play very well. Now, the biggest issue with this is that Danny Dimes, Danny Fumbles, Danny Stumbles is not going to be starting in this matchup, so Colt McCoy is definitely, in my opinion, a step down from Daniel Jones, even if Daniel Jones hasn't been all that great. So I do think Evan Ingram plays all right in this one. It definitely has a whole lot of upside up against the Cleveland Browns. Closing in in the top 10, we have Noah Fant versus the Buffalo Bills. Now, Noah Fant last week just got sick during the game and screwed you over. If you had Noah Fant, you were probably so pissed last week because he put up a fat zero because he got in the game, and I swear, like five minutes later, this motherfucker must have been throwing up in a garbage can or something. I have no idea what happened to Noah Fant, but he did end up getting sick, so they pulled him from the game. But apparently, he's good to go this week, so he didn't have the Rona. So, with that said, he is a tight end, very utilized in this offense that Drew Locke likes to use. So, I will feel pretty confident with Fant at 10 this week up against the Buffalo Bills tomorrow on Saturday. Now, to tight ends 11 through 20. So, if you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below if you're new. And if you're not new, you've been watching for a while, please make sure that you hit that like button down below. Now, to number 11, we have Dalton Schultz versus the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Andy Dalton and Dalton Schultz just have that Dalton to Dalton connection that has been working pretty well thus far this season. So I feel him as a very safe tight end. Not a whole lot of upside because I don't see them really, really laying the smack down to the San Francisco 49ers, but I do think Dalton Schultz will get enough work in this game to put him inside the top 11. Now, number 12, we have Logan Thomas versus the Seattle Seahawks. Now, Logan Thomas was originally, for me, like a top eight, top nine-ish guy, but I threw him down the fucking river because... He's not playing with Alex Smith. Alex Smith has been ruled out pretty much for this game. It seems like it's going to be Dwayne Trash Can Hashcans starting under center. Will this be the revitalization of Dwayne Hashkins' career? Or will this be a bad game for Logan Thomas? It seems like Alex Smith and Logan Thomas were on the right connection, the right wavelength on a weekly basis. And I'm just not sure that him and Dwayne Hashkins will be up against Seattle, which is definitely a high upside matchup. At number 13, we have Hayden Hurst versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, Hayden Hurst has had two bad games in a row. Uh, His two worst games of the year were up against New Orleans, and then last week played bad as well, so I don't know what to think about Hayden Hurst. I really don't. 
This offense just does not look good without Julio. Seems like Julio may play, may miss. If Julio misses, I'm all out on Hayden Hurst this week up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And number 14, we have Jordan Reed at the Dallas Cowboys. And now it appears that magically George Kittle is going to come back. Why in the fuck is George Kittle trying to come back? The season is pretty much lost. Do not come back, George Kittle, and hurt yourself more. Let Jordan Reed play in this juicy, juicy matchup up against the Dallas Cowboys. But if George Kittle somehow plays, you're definitely playing him up against the Dallas Cowboys. Number 15, we have the waiver wire darling Cole Komet at the Minnesota Vikings. Two solid games in a row now for the young rookie, Mr. Komet. Komet has looked pretty decent as of recently, ever since Mitchell Trubisky took over in this offense, and Jimmy Graham has kind of been fading away. With that said, though, Jimmy G did end up finding his way into the end zone last week, which definitely brings questions into Cole Komet's value. But even with Graham scoring last week, Komet still put up a decent point total to where I feel confident enough here up against Minnesota to fire up Mr. Komet. And number 16, we have Janu Smith versus the Detroit Lions. Janu has been out for a while. Uh, we saw his backup, Anthony Fersker, I believe his name is something. Ferkser. The guy's not all that great, but he does look decent in this offense. Why? Because the offense utilizes the fucking tight end, and Janu Smith will be utilized as well. But coming off of an injury, I don't necessarily buy completely into that. He's 100% healthy. So I'm not super bought into him this week. Again, there's also that thought process that up against Detroit, this may just be a smackdown brother, Hulk Hogan style of the Detroit Lions to where the fact that they might just run the ball a million times with Derrick Henry instead of trying to air the ball out. And number 17, we have Higby versus the New York Football Jets, a juicy matchup, but will they even have to throw against the Jets late in the game? Probably not, which really limits Higby's upside considering he's just really just a tight end just really a tight end. Of course he's a tight end. Really a touchdown dependent tight end over there in LA. At number 18, we have Irv Smith Jr. versus the Chicago Bears. Now Irv Smith, just like with Komet, uh, have been pretty decent as of recently. Smith got his job mainly due to the fact that Kyle Rudolph, the red nose reindeer, ended up getting hurt. So this is definitely a nice opportunity for Irv Smith, but going up against Chicago's defense that definitely flicks the light switch on the on every once in a while and looks very good. I'm not too sure I love Smith in this matchup. At number 19, we have Trey Boo Boo, Trey Burton versus the Houston Texans. Now, the issue with Trey Burton is that Phillip Rivers, well, the biggest bonus is that Phillip Rivers just loves that tight end. There's a reason why he is the 11 kids because that tight end is just his spot but with that said Trey Burton is not the only tight end active Jack Doyle will be playing uh, Mo Money Mo Cox Mo Alley Cox will be playing so it's definitely kind of a bit of an issue when you have three fucking tight ends who could end up scoring in this matchup so with that said that's why I have Burton at 19 but all of those guys pretty much have tight ends to be or the opportunity to be like top 10 guys on a weekly basis and closing in the top 20 we have Dan Arnold the Arnold Nater Dan Arnold versus the Philadelphia Eagles get to the chopper Dan Arnold has been pretty decent as of recently and has been playing well in this uh, Arizona Cardinals offense to the point where I do feel confident ranking him inside of the top 10, 20 due to his volume increasing as the weeks have gone on but he really is going to have to prove it for like five weeks in a row for me to want to start him. And maybe next year he'll be a guy that I'm looking at deep down in the depths of my drafts. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. Make sure you guys check out OverlayDFS.com as well. Link down below in the description. I love you guys all. As always, kaboooey!